Bless the Lord. Hey, just take it up, Jeff. Hallelujah. Praise God. Any testimonies tonight that somebody wants to testify about the glory of God? I've got several hands going up. <laughs> She's older. <laughs> And then Tuesday night, I got a text message from Jay that said, I just had a talk with God and got one. Yeah. And that's Gabriel's father. Hallelujah. And I had been praying and praying and praying on him. And it was like Satan was just trying to tear me down. And then Wednesday when we came in here, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And see getting drunk in the spirit for the first time. Yeah. And yeah. Bless the Lord. And the one filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, devil, you know, I get under my feet. Because I am not going nowhere. Because I just thank the Lord because He knows what's in store. Exactly. And that, you know, Aaron put on there, you know, Mom, this is why you face some trials. But I want to thank God because my storms have been hard. But thank God every time He's like, Here, Judy, I'm showing you. Here's another school. I just thank God so much for this. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You know what? The devil's mad at you. That's That's the reason why. Because look at the people that you've influenced. In a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you got this whole area covered with your family, and the devil don't like that, and he'll do anything and everything. Hear me, he'll put a bull's mark on your back, but look at me, praise God, hallelujah, as long as you're established in the Lord, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Everything's going to work for the better or the good to them that love the Lord that are called according to his purpose, and God's going to bring it to pass in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Aaron, you had your hand up. I talked about a month ago. Yeah. Yes, so man. The homecoming of the last couple weeks ago, baptism. Mm. It felt like my wedding. I'm about right here. It's the man I was waiting for walking to the door. Oh, uh, I can't praise God on that. All this week I've been uh, reading on Job. How how strong that man was. Never was a foolish. Mm. Never cursed. Never said nothing about God. Mm-hmm. Never brought it out of his mouth. Even his wife just cursed God. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> foolish woman, watch your mouth. You know? Yeah. <laughs> But that's who I want to be. That's exactly. who I want to be. And at work, I mean, I'm finally getting these old guys, older gentlemen coming up to me and wanting to you know my opinion of things and of, of God and this and that. And it's, they're fucking, everybody's noticing Aaron's changing. Aaron has been cussing. Aaron, you can't hear Aaron saying the S-bomb clear across the whole, you know, workplace. Oh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, what's going on? It, it's God. It truly is. And then more and more, all the speakers are all the like him. I want to be that man that to and fro the devil went and God just, hey, don't pick on Aaron. Don't <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't truly want that. <laughs> exactly. I want that strength to the Lord and I can't thank him for the blessings of every day waking up and every day it was just more and more surprises of each week. And my family getting saved and continuing on. I can't thank God enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. I'm going to talk tonight about the established heart, just what you want and what you desire in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody else had their hand up. Bless God. I thought there was a couple hands up, but maybe I'm mistaken. Aaron? Wednesday night, too. That was to get filled with the Spirit and see everybody else and, and the move that, that was happening was awesome. Mm. And it's like... The night before at work, my Wednesday, it was, I, you said you were struggling with, with the message you were going to do and everything. I was happy all night. And that, that song that we sung, Victory in Jesus, was playing through my head all night. <laughs> and to come here and, and feel that, and it's like I almost didn't even come to church because she was sick. And it's like, well, I'll just stay home, you know. Aries was all swimming with her friend. I'm like, well, I'll just stay home with her to see what I'm feeling good. And it's like, no, I Every time that we don't go to church for some random reason, something awesome happens. It's like, I'm going to church. <laughs> so then we get here, and we go up front, and it's like, I just kind of sneak into one of the front rows. Like, everybody else is already up there. I'll just hang out back here. And Christy said, you know, come on up here, Adam. There's room for you up here. So I go on up, and then you call for everybody to come up to get filled with the Spirit. And it's like, I just kind of hung back, you know. And I, that, 
And to see everybody else come up, and it's like, no, I, I want to be part of this too. And to feel that, it was just awesome. Amen. It's all thanks to God. Praise God. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. The Lord is working mightily in the hearts and lives of some of these young ones in the Lord Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. What testimonies. I tell you what, thrills my soul just to hear that in Jesus' name. And uh, Aaron, don't be surprised that God make you a preacher, brother. Right. Amen. I'm serious. I, you know, I, it wouldn't surprise me in the least bit that God take you from the deepest, lowest pits of hell itself and bring you up out of that mully grub. Hallelujah, and place an anointing in your life to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the kind of God that we serve in Jesus' name. And some would say, oh, no, you know, I know Aaron's life. I don't know Aaron's life. I don't know what he's been in and what he's, what he's done. And you know what? The past is in the past, but the future is the future in the name of the Lord. And back when I was in sin and, and uh, serving the devil, if somebody told me that I would be a preacher Hear me, I'd have drilled him between the eyes. That's the type of guy I was. I, I didn't want nothing to do with God. But there come a time that God spoke to my heart, hallelujah, and said, I'm making you a preacher. And I thought, well, man, I don't have the education. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the wisdom. He said, you're a good, you're, you're, you're a good candidate to qualify to be a preacher. You don't know nothing. Are you hearing me? God can work with nothing and make something out of it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Matter of fact, God likes to work with the nothings. Hallelujah. And make something beautiful out of it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I say this, brother. Keep studying the word. Keep seeking the face of God. Keep well established in the word of God. Bless the Lord. God will establish you. Hallelujah. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus. But don't be surprised. I'm not trying to say anything or push you in any direction. But don't be surprised that there come a call in your life somewhere down along the line, hear me, in the life of your, that you live before the Lord. Hallelujah, that God would call you into, into ministry in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And some would say, I can't believe that. That's Aaron. I know Aaron. There's no way. But can I tell you something? Who would ever believe Aaron would be the way that he is now? God has already taken him from, I mean, a big step, bless the Lord, from one place to another in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Some would say, you know, some of us older ones would say, oh, pastor, you make too much over these young ones. Well, can I tell you something? When you got babies, you get, babies get a lot of attention. Am I right? I said babies get a lot of attention. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. And you know what? We ought to be patting some of these on the back in the name of the Lord and encouraging them in the faith and their walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, just building them up and encouraging them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Yes, bless God, the enemy will try to come at us, try to distract us, try to take things away from us. Hear me, but I know who I have believed. Hear me, child of God, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against us? Bless God. And don't be surprised, just like you said, you know, people, uh, guys coming up to you asking you about spiritual things, you know. Bless the Lord. They've done that to me. They do it to Phil in his factory where he works at. Bless God. Hallelujah. Understand something. People are hungry for something. People see a change in individuals' lives. Are you hearing me? Where uh, uh, Aaron said, you know, you could hear him throw the F-bomb all the way across the plant. Well, that's not being thrown across the plant anymore. Can I tell you, hallelujah, God has changed his figure of speech. And only through the power of the Holy Spirit can, can God do such a thing. Man can't do it, but God can do it in the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Bless the Lord. Can we give the Lord one more hand clap for these in Jesus' name? <laughs> hallelujah. Don't want to leave anybody out. Bless God. Anybody else have a testimony tonight? Lynette? He's altogether different. Mm -hmm. And he's been my biggest battle since it's rebellion. Mm -hmm. And I know, I said, even he admitted, he says, God must have a calling on his life because he's fighting tooth and nail with the devil. And I just kept saying, Lord, I claim my children for you. And I just thank God because he still don't like me to say no. When he asks for permission for something and I say no, it's like a totally different kid I got to deal with. But I just have to stick to my guns and say, I, what I said, I meant, you know, because if he can get me talked out of it, that's what his goal is. But that's just a typical kid, I think. But but sometimes he just wants, I mean, he'll, he'll just put me through the mill sometimes. And I just thank God because I, I 
have seen a big change in him, and Amen. he's trying. And I just, I mean, each and every one of us have our, you know, battles that we go through. Right. We're not perfect, but I just thank God because I have seen a big change in how he acted toward me, and he's trying to do better. Hallelujah. Even for him to admit it up there, exactly. That really touched me when he said it. Exactly. That's why. That's why I say, you know, I'm the preacher, and I can stand up here and see everybody out here. You, it was, all that you see is the back of somebody's head, wherever you're sitting. But I can see everybody out here, and especially when you're up around the front of the altars. And I know time, and he'd never, ever lift his hands to glorify and praise God. He was always just kind of stone faced and just sat there. But I see a change in that young man in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah to the Lamb. He got touched down at camp, and the Lord ministered to him, filled him with the Holy Spirit, I believe it was. And, and uh, there's, there's a change. He wanted to go to, on a trip to Africa. And, and I told Timon, I said, Timon, don't be discouraged because that door shut down. There might be another door open up for you in the name of Jesus. You don't know you might have a missionary on your hands. Only God knows in the name of the Lord. I'm not trying to put people in offices, but, but God knows the heart. And I know sometimes the heart of the Lord, and I see how God operates and functions. And I know one thing, that this church is a sending church. It's, it's a church that sends people out into the highways and byways to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we give God all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad God sent you our direction. I said, I'm glad God sent you in our direction. And everybody said, thank God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah to the Lamb, forevermore and evermore. So uh, encourage these that have given their hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I look at Ginger back there. She gave her heart to the Lord, uh, what was it, last Sunday, wasn't it, or Sunday before last? And uh, got filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, bless the Lord. Uh, Wednesday, she was one of them that got filled with the Holy Spirit. Wednesday night, several got filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know how many, six, maybe five, six, maybe more. I don't know. But we thank God for that in the name of the Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. You realize many Pentecostal churches, they won't even preach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit anymore. Won't even touch the subject. But, folk, it's the backbone of the Christian. It's the power pack of, yes. of the Christian, hallelujah, is to be filled with the power of God Almighty in Jesus' name. And can I tell you something? As long as I'm preacher at this church, you're going to hear about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're going to see people saved, but you know what? After they get saved, my intention is to get them filled with the Holy Spirit as quick as possible in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, to the Lamb. And you know what? You don't have to wait for Pastor Martin to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You can get baptized in the Holy Spirit at your home, in your own devotions. Bless the Lord. Just crying out to the Lord and say, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit, and God will fill you. I've used this for an example. We had a lady in the church one time. She sought for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for many years, or for many, many months, and so discouraged that she couldn't receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And her name was Teresa. And, and I said, Teresa, I said, but just be patient. I said, you know, sooner or later, God's going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. It's just a, 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 a thing between you and God. Bless the Lord where your faith is just uh, in childlike simplicity and you accept it. Hallelujah. She called me up on the phone one time. She said, Pastor Martin, you're not going to believe what happened to me. And I said, you don't even have to tell me what happened to you. I already know by the figure of her voice on the phone. I said, God filled you with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, didn't he? he? She said, how did you know? I said, I can tell it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You know what she was doing? She was mowing a yard. She was mowing a yard and God filled her with the Holy Spirit. She started speaking in tongues. I, I bet that yard probably had like this here. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, she probably got off of it and just got down on her knees or just lifted up her hands and said, thank, thank you, thank you, Jesus, in my heart. There was another man who said, you know, I got filled with the Holy Spirit shaven. Hallelujah, sought for the Holy Spirit and, and, and had the evidence of speaking in other tongues and he was in his bathroom at, at the time and he was shaven and praising the Lord and then all of a sudden he just started speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So God, don't, you don't have to be in a church to be filled with the Holy Spirit. All you got to do is just believe it. Believe it and receive it in Jesus' 
Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. I don't know about you, but yes, if somebody says, are you one of those tongue talkers? I'll say, yes, I am one of those tongue talkers. Can I tell you something? I got just what they've got in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. You might have an argument, but I've got an experience. I know what happened to me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Anybody else tonight? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And when he said he wouldn't be filled with the Holy Spirit, just thrilled my soul. I'm telling you, this kid, I mean, he rides, he rode home with me uh, last Sunday night. And when I said that he was talking with me, it was like sitting talking to an adult. He was using your words about that long that I never even understood. <laughs> he was talking about dinosaurs and, and, and different things, you know, and, and, and he used some type of a word that was uh, a $50 million word about that long. And I said, explain to me what that word is. I said, I've never heard that word before and I can't even say it now. And I mean, he explained it right down to the T. And I thought, where in the world? I said, where'd you learn that at? He said, reading books. And I'm telling you, hear me, hallelujah. We, we got talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and, how to be, and, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And he hungered for that, wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, well, you've got to be saved, Joe, first. And, and he said, well, I am saved, you know. And I said, I believe you are. Bless the Lord. And we thank God, hear me, hallelujah, that God filled him with the Holy Spirit. When I laid hands on him and I began to pray in the Holy Ghost, he kept, just kept looking at me. His eyes was like saucers and kept looking at me. And then all of a sudden he just started praying in the Holy Spirit. And we thank God for it in Jesus' name. And I say to Greg, encourage your young ones. Hear me, if they're saved, listen to me. A lot of people say, you know, I'm not going to allow my kid to go down to the altar uh, when, they're, when they're young. You don't know what God is doing with them. You don't know what God is dealing with them at, at an early age. We had several back several months ago or maybe a year ago last year, uh, kids seven, eight years old, six years old, get filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe like five or six of them be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God is on the move in Jesus' name. That's all I can say. He's on the move in the name of the Lord Jesus. And there's a lot of hungry hearts out there looking for the supernatural. Now, what I'm talking about and what we're talking about here tonight, everything is supernatural from God. You can't comprehend God out of the natural mind. Somebody say amen. If you try to comprehend this word out of the natural intellect, you're not going to comprehend it. You know why? Because you don't have a receiver to comprehend it. It's the Holy Spirit that wrote this book. Hallelujah. And if you're not saved, you're not going to understand this book. Right. Hear me. Because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness unto him. Can I tell you something? Once you get born again, you got a receiver. Hallelujah. They're called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals the written word into your heart and causes it to come alive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That you'd never seen it like that before. Hallelujah. Bless God. Before you was ever saved, Aaron, I doubt if you ever picked the Bible up. You probably didn't have no, no, uh, no, uh, uh, inclination about the Bible, but now that Christ has come into your heart and life, well, you're just devouring it. Want to know more and more and more about the Lord Jesus. You see, that's nothing but the Holy Spirit. Bless God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And we thank God 
God and praise God, hear me, hallelujah, for all the hunger that God is placing in people's hearts. And there's people out there, as I said, they're looking for the supernatural. They want something supernaturally. And can I tell you something? The church ought to hold the goods. If they come into the house of God and they see a dead church, what's the reason for them to come back? Come on, church. What's the reason for them to come back? If they don't see something, hear me, supernaturally, and I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about those that just want to play church, but those that are really hungry for God. Sometimes those that want to play church, they'll come in the house of God and the gifts of spirit will start flowing and function and operate. Rating, can I tell you, they don't stay very long, they'll run out the door. But those that are hungry for more of God, listen to me, God will draw them, hallelujah, bless the Lord, and you'll see the supernatural. And I believe without a shadow of doubt, before we go on home, before the Lord calls us in the rapture of the church, or the calls, calls us up, up into the air, hear me, at the rapture of the church, we're going to see miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle, hallelujah, for those that believe in the supernatural power of God Almighty. Some would say, how do you know that? Because hear me, hallelujah, the, the Bible says that this latter rain will be greater than the former. When was the former? Well, the book of Acts was the former. That's when the Spirit of God would begin to be poured out. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. If you read through the book of Acts, it'll show you what the church service ought to be. There was people getting saved. There was people getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. There was people, look at me, being used with the gifts of the Spirit. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Why? The gospel was being presented and being preached. Stephen, a man full of the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. Hear me. Bless the Lord. A, a mighty man. I'm sorry, not Stephen, but Philip, a mighty man filled with the Holy Ghost and power. Didn't uh, even say that he was a, a preacher, but he went down to Samaria and he preached Jesus to them. And can I tell you something? Hallelujah, the whole town ended up getting saved because of his testimony. You can read that in the book of Acts. And the Bible said that they brought all their curious arts. They brought all their magic books. Are you hearing me? Everything. They piled them in a pile and they burned them up. Look at me. How many know that's a move of God? I said that's a move of God. Understand something. I don't have to read my horoscope. I've got something better than a horoscope. I've got the Holy Spirit that tells me what my future is. Amen. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Acknowledge Him. The Lord says, Ask of me and I will show you things to come. Praise the Lord forevermore. So we ask of the Lord, God, show me, hallelujah, what you want me to do. Show me, God, what's in store for me. And day by day, hear me, week by week, month by month, year by year, he opens up the door to show you, hallelujah, what he desires of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So understand something. Bless God. The book of Acts is to be, it's to be the example of, are the roadmap of the, for, for the diagram of the church today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I believe we're going to see blinded eyes open. I believe we're going to see deaf ears unstopped. I believe we're going to see people come out of wheelchairs in Jesus' name. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Amen. I said, wouldn't that be wonderful? Can I tell you something? They did it in the early church. Hallelujah. It wasn't them, but it was God working through them and manifesting His power through them, we've seen miracles here, hear me, hallelujah here, but nothing like we're going to see in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Can I tell you something? I can't wait in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get into the word or otherwise we're not going to get into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you tonight about the established heart, just what you was talking about, uh, Aaron. Bless the Lord. But before we get any further, let me talk about uh, establishment, established. Hallelujah. Let me give Webster's uh, definition of it. It says this, to make firm, to install on a permanent basis, to originate and secure permanently, to stand. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You know what? He's describing a Christian. That's the way a Christian should be established. Look at me permanently. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Matter of fact, if you're not established permanently, look at me, 
and you get moved away, heaven's not going to be your home. We've got to be established, hallelujah, upon the word. How many know that God's word is an established word? Listen to what he says. He says this. He said that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will remain. I don't know about you, but that's established. Amen. God's word is established, and we need to be established on the word of God. Hallelujah. You see, when God calls us into a relationship with him, and when I talk about relationship, hear me, I'm talking about getting saved. When you get saved, you got a brand new spirit, and now you've got relationship with Jesus Christ. You can commune with him 365 days a year. Any time of the day, you can communicate with him. Hallelujah. But when he calls us into relationship, he's calling us in to a permanent relationship. Everybody say permanent. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and tell them it's not a date, it's a marriage. Come on. It's not a date, it's a marriage. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We're permanent. We're fixed together. We're glued together with Christ Jesus, our Lord. God wants our hearts firmly fixed and established upon Him. And the only way that it can be firmly fixed Hear, hear me, in the Lord Jesus Christ is number one, my heart has got to belong to the Lord. I'm going to say it again. My heart has got to belong, uh, belong to the Lord. Hallelujah, to the Lamb. If our heart doesn't belong to the Lord, hear me, hallelujah, you'll be drifted off course. Have you ever heard of heart, half-heartedness? Doing things half-heartedly? People that maybe like uh, 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 people that are constructing something, maybe a building or remodeling their home, uh, and they really don't want to do it, but yet they do it half-heartedly. And you'll go back three years ago, and it's still the same way it was when they half-heartedly started it. But somebody that is firmly fixed and getting the thing done, Hallelujah! Can I tell you, you'll see them working on it day and night. And everybody said that means they're well established. Bless God in the, in the project that they're doing. Bless the Lord. You and I have got to be permanently established in the Lord Jesus Christ and not allow things to pull us away from our relationship that we have with the Lord God. Somebody say amen. Look at, uh, 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 Luke 12, 34. Luke 12, 34 says this. Luke 12, 34 says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Can you say that out loud with me? For where your treasure is, there's where your heart will be also. If your heart is not fixed on the Lord, it's going to be fixed on something other. Am I right? It's going to be fixed on something other. It says where, where your treasure is, there's where your heart will be. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you're in love with your wife or with your spouse, hallelujah, there's where your treasure is. Hallelujah. If you're in love with Jesus, look at me, there's where your heart's going to be. And everybody said, amen. Now, I realize this is some, uh, uh, just simple type of preaching, but I believe we need to get back to the basics. Are you hearing me? And get well established in God's word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want us to look at an incident here in the Bible in Luke 18. Luke 18. There's a man here that wanted to be a disciple of the Lord. But the Lord required something of him. Listen to what it says here. Luke 18. We'll start with the 18th verse. Luke 18, 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The man wants to get saved. Now listen to what he says. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good save one, that is God. Thou, thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my Youth up, but he's still empty on the inside. Hear me. Hallelujah. And besides that, he's a liar. 
Some would say, what do you mean he's a liar? Because there's no one that has ever kept the law to jot and tittle except one man, and that man was Jesus Christ. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah. He said, all, he said, all these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through the, the, a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, was Jesus preaching against riches on this guy? No, understand something. The Lord knows our heart before we ever give our hearts to him. Hear me. Hallelujah. He knows what our heart desire is. And he knew that this man's treasure, look at me, was his wealth and his riches. So the Lord says, all right, if you want to follow me, he said, go sell everything you've got, give it to the poor, come and be one of my disciples. And he dropped his head and walked away in discouragement. Understand me, God cannot have divided loves. Our love has got to be sold totally and completely on the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said amen. amen. He's not speaking against riches or wealth. Hear me, child of God. But if riches and wealth control you, then the chances are God will deal with that in your heart. Anything that takes us away from the love of God Almighty, God will deal with that very thing in our lives. I've uh, used this for an example, and uh, it bears repeating. I used to love hunting dogs, and I used to love coon hunting, and that was my God after I got saved. Hear me, I had two loves. And I remember one night very plainly when I was out in the woods, and, and the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, it's either going to be me or those dogs, one of the two. You, you, you make the choice. Because you know what it was doing? It was pulling me away from church services. It was pulling me away from the things of God. And you know what I did? I went and sold my dogs. I got rid of them and didn't go coon hunting anymore. Can I tell you something? Hallelujah. I don't want nothing to interfere with my relationship that I have with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Look at me. Hallelujah. We're talking about eternity here, folk. Eternity here, folk. It's not just a game that we play, that song that we sing, or just a song that we sing. And I, I, I'm afraid some people are playing games with God. And can I tell you something? The devil's got them right where he wants them. Hear me. Hallelujah. Our love has got to be towards the Lord Jesus Christ and him and him alone. Look at me. Hallelujah. If, we, if our loves are divided, we cannot be established. That's all there is to it. Why? Because we'll be to, po, told, poor, uh, we'll be, be torn this direction and we'll be torn that direction. Hallelujah. Jesus said this, If a man would come after me, let him take up his cross and follow after me. You know, a lot of people want the blessings of God. They want the promises of God, but they don't want the lordship of God. I, hallelujah. I take you for my Savior, but I don't want you to be Lord. I don't want to commit to anything, hallelujah, except salvation. Can I tell you something? It don't work that way. I said, it don't work that way. Jesus said, not my will. When he went to the cross, he said, not my will. He didn't want to go, but he said, but your will be done and established. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So understand me. Hear me, child of God. Bless the Lord to be established in, the, in, in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our heart has got to be sold out 110%. Jesus said, hallelujah, if a man put his hand to the plow and keeps looking back, he's not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. What's he saying there? He said, if you're, if you're hands to the plow, and you keep looking back to the old past, and a lot of people do that, hear me, look back to the old past, he said, you're not worthy of my kingdom. When you put your hand to the plow, bless God, we've got to plow a, a, a straight and a narrow furrow. Are you hearing me? You can't be one of these numbers. Understand that. 
Hallelujah. We put our hands to the plow and we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in the straight and lead us in the narrow and not look back in Jesus' name. God took me out of a lot of junk, can I tell you? Hallelujah. Thank God I'm not in that junk anymore in Jesus' name. I've been set free, look at me, and He's captured my heart. Hallelujah. Can I say this? I'm in love with Jesus. I said, I'm in love with Jesus. I've been in love with Jesus for oh, about 40 years now. Hallelujah. And if he should tarry, I'm going to keep on loving him. Hallelujah. Forever and ever and ever. If I'm not in love with Jesus, well, why would I want to go to heaven? Because I'm going to live with him in heaven for eternity. Bless God. Hallelujah. So my love for him, hallelujah, has got to surpass Everything in this world. We, we used to sing a song, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. You mean tell me I can't have no fun in this life? God is no killjoy, hear me. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. You know what we want to do? We want to seek the things first, allow those things to take place. Then if i got time, I'll seek God. That's not being established. That's not being established. Being established, hear me, child of God, hallelujah, is a fixed permanent position that you are in and you won't allow the things of the world to pull you away from it. And everybody said, amen and amen and amen. How many in here has been saved over 15 years? Let me see your hands. How many times has the devil tried to pull you away from your, your calling in Christ Jesus? We've got a high calling. How many times? Hallelujah, have tried to pull you away. But can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit keeps us back in the straight and in the narrow. Are you hearing me? And we keep pressing in. We keep advancing the kingdom of God in our own hearts and in our own lives. Hear me. Hallelujah. Don't get caught up in the things of this world. Here's an established word. This world's going to burn and everything in it's going to burn. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? The only thing you're going to be able to take with you when you die is your relationship that you have with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The rest of stuff means nothing. Little to nothing. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. So our heart has got to be, listen, it's got to belong totally and completely unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Aren't you glad Jesus didn't have heartily die on the cross of Calvary? Aren't you glad he didn't, die? he didn't have hardly take the sin of mankind? Well, bless the Lord, I'll go to the cross, but you know what, I can't, go, I can't take all those sins. They've got to bear some of them. Can I tell you something? He took it all. I said every bit of it, hallelujah. He said, I only do those things my Father tells me to do. Hallelujah. And thank God He took all the sin of the world upon Him. A man that knew no sin became a sin offering for you and for me. And thank God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In return, He has saved me and He has anchored me steadfast, unmovable in the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm established in His kingdom. Hallelujah. Look at me. I don't want to make it through on the skin of my teeth. And if you got skin on your teeth, you need to see a dentist. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Some people just want to make it in on the skin of their teeth. Hear me? Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? I don't want to make it in on the skin of my teeth. I want to be a pillar in the temple of my God. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's, that's what Scripture reset, records for those that overcome. I'll make him a pillar in my temple. Can I tell you something? Hallelujah. The only way you're going to overcome is that you be established in your relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It's not one day I'm serving God, the next day I'm serving other things. Are you hearing me? No, it's 365 days a year, hallelujah, that I serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise the Lord forevermore. You see, I've got relationship with Him. I don't have religiosity or I don't have religion. I've got relationship. 
And that relationship can keep growing and growing and growing. The more that we spend in His Word, the more that we seek His face, look at me, the more we become established in His kingdom. And everybody said amen and amen. Psalms, the book of Psalms says the Lord, uh, the 23rd Psalm, it says the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hallelujah. You see, he feeds my hungry soul. He satisfies me, hallelujah, with his presence inside of me, hallelujah. And as I seek his face, the more and more I want to serve him, the more and more I want to be like him in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Paul gives in his description of an established heart. Let's look at it in uh, Romans, the 8th chapter. Romans, the 8th chapter. Anybody getting anything out of this besides me? Romans 8, 35. Romans 8, 35. Let's read it together, give you a little time to flip over there. Let's read. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? You see, the apostles, he's quoting a question here. Hear me, to the Roman church. He's speaking to the church, he's not speaking to sinners. But he says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine... Our nakedness, our peril, our sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Now look what he says here. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Through what things? Nay, and through all these things we're more than conquerors. Through what? What things? Hallelujah. Tribulation, distress, persecutions, famine, nakedness, perils, and sword. He said we're more than conqueror. This is a man that is well established in the word of God that do know his God. Hallelujah. Daniel says they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits for him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Nay, in all these things we're more than conqueror through him that loved us. Now look what he says here. 38th verse, read it. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Look at me. The only thing that can separate you if you're well established in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love relationship with Him, the only thing that can separate you is you yourself. You can walk away from God anytime you want to walk away from God. I could walk away from God anytime I wanted to walk away from God. Are you hearing me, child of God? Hallelujah. But can I tell you, look at me, through all of it, Hallelujah. I am persuaded that he's able to keep me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Through all of the, of the persecution, through all the, the, the rigmarole of people talking bad about you and this and that and trying to cut you down. Bless God, it hasn't pulled you under, but it has made you greater and strengthened you in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. And you have no, no, no inclination of turning back or turning away from God Almighty. Why? Because He has become your confidence. He has become your strength. He has become, listen, a comforter that sticketh closer than a brother. He has become your rock and your shield and your fortress and your high tower. He has become, hear me, child of God, He he has become your all and your all. He's become your defense system in Jesus' name. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? You see, we lean not to our own understanding. Lean not to your own understanding, but in, in everything, hallelujah, we trust in the Lord and He shall bring it to pass in Jesus' name. 
How many, when we fall into difficult circumstances, we leave our fixed position in the Lord Jesus Christ and think that God needs my help to get something accomplished? Can I tell you something? He don't need you. He's God. He's bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. We are firmly fixed, just like the Apostle Paul said, for I am persuaded. Everybody says persuaded. In other words, I'm sold out on God's Word. Everybody say sold out. Hallelujah. Can you be moved away from God's Word? As long as you keep your, your eyes focused and keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, hear me, child of God, God will see to it that nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God that you have in Christ Jesus your Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. 2 Corinthians if you would please for a second here. 2 Corinthians the 11th chapter and the 23rd verse. Paul says this, he gives a little bit of some of the things that he went through. He said, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more more in labors, more abundant in stripes, above measures, in prisons, more frequent in deaths often. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbery in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold nakedness, beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak and I'm not weak? Who is offended and I'm not burned? Hallelujah. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concerns mine infirmities. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Can I tell you something? Paul's shield of faith had a lot of dents in it. I said his shield of faith had a lot of dents in it. Hear me. Beaten, uh, stoned, listen, left for dead, shipwrecks, bless God forevermore. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? In all those things, he was still more than conqueror. I'm not leaving. I'm staying right in my pea patch and I'm not leaving this pea patch. Hallelujah in the name of the Lord. This belongs to me. I'm God's property. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He saved me with his grace, with his mercy, with his blood. Bless the Lord. He has fixed my heart. Hallelujah. That I might look upon him in all difficult circumstances and situations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I've been established in the kingdom of God. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now let me say this. How many know that establishment isn't, if Pastor Martin don't shake my hand, I'm out of here. If I don't receive recognition, I'm out of here. There is no permanent stance in that. It don't take a rocket scientist to figure out where people are at. Are you hearing me? Hear me, or a brain surgeon. Understand me, some people delay. Light and jumping from one church to another church to another church and picking a church apart. Can I tell you something? One day they're going to be picked apart. God is in defense of us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I pray? I pray the blessings of the Lord upon them. In Jesus' name, because I won't get caught up into their, 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 their fury, so to speak, or their, their little, little game that they play. Hallelujah. Because I won't be brought out from that circle. Are you hearing me, child of God? Because when a person gets brought out from under that circle and you start acting like they're acting, look at me. How deep is your relationship with the Lord? That's the the question I've got to ask. And can I tell you, I've learned over many, many, many years of being preacher and being saved, not everybody likes me. (laughs) And can I tell you something, especially in leadership, when you make decisions, hear me, people are going to come at you with both barrels. But you know what? 
Hallelujah to the Lamb. Exactly, Jeff. You've got to still love me if you want to make heaven your home. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Some decisions I don't like to make, but can I tell you some decisions you've got to make. Some things you need to address. Listen person to person in the name of the Lord. Because if you don't, Look at me, and what you do is go behind that person's back and start doing the very same thing that they're doing. Hear me. You know what? You're no better off than what they are. They're not permanently fixed. Hear me. Hallelujah. I've had people leave because somebody's been sitting in their, their, their seat. Stop and think of that. Not recently, but these have been years back. And you know what they said? This is what they said. The people said, you know what? These, young, these new people coming in here, they haven't been in this church as long as what I've been in here, and this is my, my, these are my che- seats that we sat in. God help us. I mean, you go by and you start scratching your head at some, you know, people that are supposed to be well seasoned in the Lord and make some flimsy type of excuse like that, somebody sat in my seat. And you know what? Sometimes we're, we're a creature of habit. I can just about tell you where everybody's going to sit in here. (laughs) Hello. It just throws you for a loop when somebody else, when they change their seat pattern and go someplace else, and you go, man, we got visitors in the house. (laughs) And why is it everybody wants to sit back toward the back and not up toward the front? I won't bite you. (laughs) Yeah, I've spit on you a little bit maybe. (laughs) Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But how many know, listen, especially unsaved people, they're not going to come to the front and sit in the front. Are you hearing me? You know what? They'll sit back in the back. Once they get saved, then they'll come to the front and sit in the front and want more of Jesus. Somebody said amen. But the older we progress in the Lord, we keep going back and back and back. Is that that a sign of backsliding? I trust we're well oiled in the Lord Jesus Christ. And somebody said amen. Amen and amen. But there's all different types of flimsy excuses. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah. What's wrong in a church? But hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Understand something. It's God's church. And God knows how to take care of His church in the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. Bless the Lord. I had one woman tell me one time, she said, you know what, I would love to be a member of this church, but I won't be a member because you're not putting things in order like they should be. She said, you need, to, you need to, to put elders in the church and put elders in charge. And I said, woman, do you know what an elder is? And she said, yeah, an older person. I said, an elder is not an older person. If you look at elder, hear me, hallelujah, in the Bible, you know what an elder was? He was a pastor. Hello. He was a pastor. Stop and think of this a second. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bishops were pastors. Understand me. Hallelujah. And, and, and you know, that, that just ate at her crawl. And you think, man, you know what? There's hundreds and thousands and millions of people going to hell, and, and, and they're worried about, you know, who's an elder and who's a deacon and who's a bishop. I could care less about titles and names. I want to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. People are going to hell in a handbasket and people want to fight over what's wrong in the body of Christ. Hello. Get filled up with God and you won't have time for that. Everybody said, Amen. You know what the Bible calls that? Busy bodies. And busy bodies will have their place in hell according to Scripture. That's what the Bible says. I didn't say it, but the Bible says it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you're looking for a perfect church, look at me. When you get there, it won't be perfect. Because there is no perfection in either one of us. We all have faults and failures. But what God is requiring of us is to be established in His kingdom and in His church in the name of Jesus. And I say, get plugged in in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. And look at me. Turn criticisms into intercessions. When we intercede on behalf of certain individuals instead of talking about them, pray for about a week for them and then see if you can criticize them. And somebody say, Amen. Amen. You see, we've got to be well established 
in the things of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And can I tell you something? I believe God is building this church even as we're speaking in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at me. He's given us people in here. Hallelujah. They don't have to float through 150 different doctrines. You don't have to tear this doctrine of this church down and this doctrine of that church down. You'll be amazed at what people come in and say, you know, well, this is what we did in the last church that we was in. And this is what we expect in this church. Can I tell you, we're not in that church. You're in this church and I'm the head of this church in the name of the Lord. God made me a leader in this church. Praise the Lord. My responsibility is not for that church or that church, but for this church. My de- the decisions, hear me, hallelujah, is not for that church, that church, but for this church in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and amen. But when you, re- when, when you step into a leadership position, you can just about accept, you, you better t- accept the repercussion that comes along with it in the name of the Lord. The higher up the ladder you go, the more responsibility you retain. Are you hearing me? And you better be well anchored in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I look at Jeff to getting his license to minister and preach. And can I tell you something? Hallelujah, if you wasn't called of the Lord, I would say don't even, don't even attempt it. Don't even attempt it. Because people can slash you, listen from pillar to post, and you've got to be able, hear me, to hold your peace, not gritting your teeth and saying, oh, I'd just love to get at them. But pray for them. Amen. Hear me. Pray for them just the way that the Word of God declares. Bless the Lord and don't let that sidetrack you. My mind is set like a flint. This church will be a soul-saving station. Hallelujah. Souls will get saved. People will get healed and keep people to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's my focal attention in this church in the name of Jesus. And I will not be moved away from it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. In uh, uh, Psalms, and, and we're going to close, in Psalms 112, if you would please. Let's go just a little bit a different direction here. Psalms 112. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalms 112, 1 through 8. Let's read it together. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Can can you turn to somebody and say, I'm blessed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. His seed shall be mighty. Your grandkids will be mighty on the face of the earth. You know what? I stake claim to that. You know why? Because I'm established. I, I, I make an establishment in the Word of God. His Word, listen to me, His Word is not a lie. His Word is truth. And if His Word says that my, 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 my seed shall be mighty upon the face of the earth, I believe exactly that in Jesus' name. I claim that to, for God's glory in the name of the Lord, that if the Lord should tarry, my grandchildren will be mighty men and mighty women of God, that God already has ordained for the people that they will marry in Jesus' name. You mean tell me you pray like that? You better believe I pray like that. Are you hearing me? At a young age, in, in the name of the Lord Jesus, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there arises light in darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion or wisdom. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. How many know God knows us and knows where we're at? Hallelujah. This is the part I like. Look what it says here. Read with me. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting 
in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemy. Somebody ought to take that and stake claim to it in the name of the Lord Jesus. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Has somebody ever made bad remarks towards you? Or maybe you went to the doctor and the doctor gave you an evil report and you literally fell and crumbled into jelly. Can I tell you, look at me. God has got you covered. He's got your backside and His presence goes before you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see, we're established in His Word. We know what His Word declares. And if God be for me, who in the world is going to be against me? In the name of Jesus, hallelujah to the Lamb. So can I tell you this? Look at me. Don't be moved to the right and don't be moved to the left, but stay, hallelujah, and be established in the kingdom of God Almighty. I'm permanently fixed in Jesus' name, and I have no desire to step out of my walk and relationship that I have with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know why? Because it's Him that has established me. And one day, I'm going to be a pillar in His temple. Are you hearing me? One day, you'll be a pillar in His temple. You know why? Because you have overcome, hear me, because you've had an established heart in the Word of God. God's Word is final say-so. It might look like somebody's getting the best, but let us hear the conclusion of the matter. God is my shield and my defense. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I stand unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise here tonight? Bless the Lord. And you know what? will be like a tree planted by the waters. Planted. The roots are deep down into the ground. I've seen uh, people that had uh, car wrecks, accidents, and hit trees head on. And can I tell you something? The tree don't move. It stays the same. Why? Because it's well established in the ground. And can I tell you something? We can get hit on the right. We can get hit on the left. We can get hit on the back side. We can get hit on the front side. But look at me. We're well established. Hallelujah. We don't fall down in Jesus' name. We don't crumble. Why? Because God keeps us in the hollow of His hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank God I'm on His side. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You've got an unseen shield around about you. And God will give you divine favor that even your enemies will be at peace with you in Jesus' name. Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. I had a man not just recently or just recently come to me, come into the, into the church, uh, I don't know, it was Monday or Tuesday, last week, whatever. Knocked on my door, church door, and I thought, well, you know, we're, we're going to go into a debating situation. I thought maybe he's going to debate, debate Scripture. But you know what? He come in with an open heart and said, you know what? I'm going to ask for your forgiveness. Will you forgive me? Because I, told, I said some bad things about you on Facebook and all different types of things. You know what? There was times I thought, man, I'm going to retaliate against this, some of the things that he is saying. But I said, no, I'm not going, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pray about the situation. And can I tell you something? God, will, when you do that, you know what you do? You heap coals of fire upon a person's head. And before long, that person, they'll come in, and there you see them asking for an apology. Or, or, or will you accept my apology? Bless the Lord forevermore. I've seen it more than once. Understand me. If God be for us, who can be against us? In Jesus' name. I'm glad, as I said, I'm on his side in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody want to add to this? Anybody ever have anything bad said about you? Have you weavered this way, back this way, and that way, and what have you? Maybe you're contemplating of stepping out and saying it's not worth it being a Christian. Can I tell you something? You hang in there and let God be your defense in the name of the Lord Jesus. My Lord, somebody else to jump to their feet and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless God for your establishing my going in 
and my going out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father, I truly thank you and I praise you tonight. That, Lord God, what we have spoken here tonight, God, that we take it into our heart, receive it, and, Lord God, that we be well established in the name of the Lord. Let us not retaliate in any way, but, Lord God, you are our strength, you are our fortress, and you are our defense system. And, Lord, I thank you and I praise you, God, that our heart, Lord, is in love with you, That, Lord, our focal attention is upon you in the name of the Lord. Holy Spirit, keep us from the evil one. Keep our heart tender and keep our heart pure, always seeking after the face of our God. I pray for everyone here tonight. God, that might be encountering difficult situations. And Lord, we know that all of us face these things. But God, that we face them not alone, that we face them with the unseen hand of the living God, that Lord, in everything, Lord God, we we are more than conquerors through Him. And Lord, I thank You that the very things that look like it destroys us, it's the very thing that will establish us in His Word, in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we can draw riches out of the darkest areas of our life in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen Amen and Amen. Give him one more hand clap of praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Have a blessed week in the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't forget.